think everyone was very impressed with the uh, makeup that you used and the uh, results you got when you did the uh, Halloween makeovers. They went over especially well. Well, they didn't exactly think we were pretty, but you did manage to scare the living hell out of some pre-adolescent children uh, with the job that you did on me and Patty. And, uh, well, and Clark, of course, who was also there. How did you come up with uh, the idea to do this in the first place? Do you normally carry around a professional quality makeup kit with you, and just when the need arises, you whip it out of the uh, whip it out of the trunk of your car? Uh, actually, I had some makeup because uh, I wanted to do some Halloween uh, customized artwork on people's faces. And with you and Dr. Patty and Clark, you are great uh, participants, and uh, I really enjoyed talking to you guys about your theme, which was Day of the Dead. Or actually, what did you call it, Carl? The undead heads. I the don't think the dead was. Yes, it was the the undead heads. We were a couple of hippies who come back from the dead. We were kind of zombie. I don't know, zombie flower children or something. Right, right. Of and course, explaining what a deadhead was to the pre-adolescent children in question became hopeless. So when they asked us who we were, we just said, oh, we're supposed to be zombies, because that's something they know about. We got a lot of photographs together of you, me, Patty, and Clark, and uh, some of them came out awfully well. I put a couple of them on the Internet, and Patty's been playing around with them, and they've gotten... Pretty good reviews after the fact. People were talking about how they wish they could have been here so that they could uh, be as terrified as the people who saw us in person. Yeah, and Carl, also when we were driving over to Clark's, I noticed you guys really got a lot of expressions from people just driving, looking at you and Dr. <laughs> Patty. And uh, it was just pretty amazing because the sequence of doing a face, you always start with a blank canvas you know, uh, without any makeup and just a clear, a clear look. And then as I was doing your face, I put the white, um, on the base. And then I started adding, uh, the contouring of the eyes in your sockets, making them darker and kind of a little menacing. And then I added the, the bloody, the bloody look on your forehead and on your cheek and also some cracks in your skull. So that's kind of like where I was getting the, the Day of the Dead concept, but the zombie look was definitely there, and you looked really great with uh, your shadows and your uh, sunglasses, and, and the day your uh, attire was excellent, too, with the scarf on your forehead and uh, the cat of the zombie look and the hippie look. I uh, especially liked what you did with Clark. He came came out of it looking like uh, October's answer to Superman more than he did anything else, like some sort of uh, after dark superhero. Yeah, and actually, Carl, I didn't have any green paint to paint him like Frankenstein, so I had to improvise with my makeup. I used a white base, and then I used an aqua green powder that gave him a Frankenstein look, and we both came to a realization that that was a great idea with a green powder because there was just much more, um, you know, shadows and and things that I was able to do with Frankenstein and uh doing his eyebrows and sunken in cheekbones and it just came out looking really nice. He was truly a good Frankenstein. I think it was a big hit with the kiddies. Yeah, it was. And you your face was pretty scary, I, I must admit. <laughs> and there were some kids that were pretty frightened, almost near to the point where they weren't gonna come up and get candy at the table. But. I wasn't aware that we were getting looks on the way over. Patty and I were in a separate car from Lois, for those of you who don't understand the context here. And she and I were talking about this and that, but I never noticed anybody looking in on us and uh, appearing horrified or anything. I'm, uh, I'm amused that you picked that up from, uh, from your perspective.
Yeah, there were some drivers, and I could just see the look in their eyes, like sca actually scared that you and Dr. Patty were uh, driving with face painted makeup. But it was it was pretty uh, provoke provocative or uh, provoking for everyone to see how scary you guys looked. And and I did Dr. Patty's eyes. I made her sockets, and I made bloody veins coming out of her eyes. And uh, gave her some really beautiful red lips with black eyeliner. And uh, added, she had a natural birthmark, so we just emphasized it a little bit more with the paint. It wasn't just uh, realistic, hyper-realistic makeup effects, though. It didn't look like uh, a gore factory or something like that. It was, uh, I, in a way, it was really, uh, really beautiful. I'm not sure if that's the right word or not, but there was something about it that was just very, uh, very crafty. It didn't look like there were actual brains coming out of our ears or anything like that, or you know the uh, the hyper realism of CGI that's so real that you know it has to be fake. It was stylized, but at the same time, it was uh, really uh, you know it really uh, struck a few people, you know, mostly children, but not all of them, I would guess, struck a few people really deep in uh, deep in a responsive chord inside them. And also, on another note, when we were taking pictures at Clark's house, in front of the house, and you and Dr. Patty, she was in her scooter, and then, then there was a really large flower that was for the flower child look. That was just really creative. Uh, you looking over her shoulder, and with the look in your eyes, and, and her look, the sweet, innocent, yet bloody look. Uh, I just thought that was so neat. And I loved what they did on Facebook. You guys turned it into black and white photos. And even that was uh, just very creative. The contrast with the black and white photo and the color images, really impressive. Yeah, the black and whites were mostly Patty's idea. And as usual, she had a very good eye about it. She's the sort of can just take, pick up a camera, turn it on and point it and get a good photograph. I think it's because she has that image in her mind. And the black and whites, uh, the black and whites, I think, bore that out. I didn't see them as anything other than color exposures, but she managed, you know, especially because the makeup itself was so colorful. But she managed to uh, find a little something in there that I didn't. So score one point for her as well. I think the photographs were as, uh, how do I put this? If the thing is doing its worth documenting, the saying goes, and I think in this case, the makeup was worth photographing a lot. And I think we'll probably get quite a few, let's say, reuses of those photographs from, uh, from now on. Thanks a lot for your time. I really appreciate it. Yes, thanks, Carl.